How to break the thinking patterns? It seems impossible to break the thinking patterns, but there is a way to do it. Mind is continuous process of thinking. Thinking cannot be stopped as such as you know. It does not mean that thinking cannot be stopped, but all efforts to stop it fail. And when it stops, it stops on its own accord. Indeed, it stops on its own. This you have to understand. Otherwise, you can go mad chasing your mind or trying to stop the train of thought sequence. No mind does not arise by stopping thinking. When the thinking is no more, no mind is. The disappearance of thought process is the death of the mind. And no mind indeed is the rebirth of the mind or the second birth, a new beginning, a new journey. The very effort to stop will create more anxiety and conflict. Also it will make you split and schizophrenic. You will be in a constant turmoil within and this is not going to help in any way. And even if you succeed in stopping the thoughts forcibly for a few moments, it will be futile. Indeed, those few moments will be almost dead moments of your being. You may feel a sort of a stillness, but there will be no silence. Remember, a forced stillness cannot be silence. Underneath it, deep in unconsciousness, the repressed mind goes on working and getting even stronger and stronger every moment. So there is no way to stop the mind. However, the mind stops and that is certain. However, certainly it stops but of its own accord. So what to do then? The only thing that you are required to do is watch but do not try to stop. There is no need to do any action against the mind. In the first place, who will do it? Remember, you are the mind. It will be indeed mind fighting against itself. You will divide your mind into two. One is trying to control over the other or one is trying to kill the other part. Certainly this is absurd. It is foolish game. It can drive you crazy. Therefore, never try to stop the mind or thinking. Instead, just watch the mind. Allow it total freedom. Let it run as fast as it wants or it can. You do not try in any way to control it. You just be a witness and it is beautiful. It is meaningful. Human mind is one of the most beautiful mechanisms. Science has not yet been able to create anything parallel to mind. Mind still remains the masterpiece yet complicated and tremendously powerful with so many potentialities. Watch it. Enjoy it. But do not watch like an enemy. Because if you look at the mind like an enemy you cannot watch. You are already prejudiced and you are already against it. You have already decided that something is wrong with the mind. When you have already concluded, then there can be no witnessing. Witnessing is the state of innocence when there is no judgment. And whether you look at somebody as an enemy, you can never look deep and you will never look into the eyes. You will simply avoid looking into the eyes. What is meant by watching the mind? Watching the mind means you are looking at the mind with deep love and reverence. Indeed, it is God's gift to you. Nothing is wrong in mind itself. Nothing is wrong in thinking as well. It is a beautiful process like any other process. Clouds moving in the sky look beautiful. 
then why not accept thoughts moving into the inner sky? Flowers blossoming on the trees look beautiful. Then why not thoughts flowering into your being? The river runs towards the ocean is beautiful, although it may deviate from the path along the way. Then why not this stream of thoughts running somewhere to an unknown destiny? Thoughts may get wavered, but ultimately these reach the being. Every movement of thought is beautiful when you are a witness. Look with deep reverence. Never try to be a fighter, instead be a lover. Watch the subtle nuances of the mind. Watch its sudden turns, leaps and bounces, the games that mind goes on playing, the dreams that it weaves, the imagination, the memory and the thousand and one projections that it creates. Watch them all. Standing there aloof, at a distance, not involved, by and by you will start feeling the disappearance of the mind. The deeper your watchfulness reaches, in the same proportion your awareness deepens. With consciousness deepening, more and more gaps start arising and so do the intervals. One thought appears on the inner sky and before another one comes in there is a gap. Sometimes these gaps are very short, small and other times they are bigger. And slowly and slowly as your watchfulness deepens the gap widens. One cloud has passed, another is coming and in between there is a gap. In those gaps, for the first time you will have the glimpses of the no mind. You will have the taste of no mind. You can give it any name, taste of Zen or Tao or Yoga or Satori. But the movement is magnanimous. In those small intervals, suddenly, the sky becomes clear and the sun is shining in its full splendor. Suddenly the world is full of mystery because all barriers are dropped now. The screen of your eyes is no more there. The screen of haziness on your eyes is no more there. With thoughts disappearing in the oblivion, eyes become crystal clear. You can see that which is. You see clearly and penetratingly. The whole existence becomes transparent. In the beginning these come just like rare moments, few and far, in between, but they will give you glimpses of what Samadhi is. Like a small drops of silence, they will come and they will disappear too. But now you know that you are on the right track. You start watching again. When a thought passes, you watch it. And then an interval comes. This too you watch. Clouds are beautiful. Sunshine is also beautiful. Now you are not choosing. You are simply a witness of all that is happening. Now there is no fixed mind. To like only the intervals is a stupidity. Attachment only to the interval is deciding against thinking. And then those intervals will disappear. They happen only when you are separate from them. They happen on own. You cannot force them to happen. They are spontaneous happenings. Go on watching. Let thoughts come and go. Thoughts move freely, nothing is wrong. Do not try to manipulate and also do not try to direct. Let thoughts move in total freedom and then intervals will be prolonged. You will be blessed with the small saturis. Sometimes minutes will pass and no thought will be there. It will be like the dead of the night when there is no traffic. 
instead there will be total silence undisturbed and still when the bigger gaps come you will not only have clarity to see into the world instead with bigger gaps you will have a new clarity arising and you will be able to see into the inner world as well with the first gaps you will see into the outer world trees will be greener than they look right now you will be surrounded by an infinite music and bliss you will be suddenly in the presence of god both indefinable and mysterious too from all around god may be touching you yet still you cannot grasp it within your reach and yet remain beyond with the gaps becoming bigger and prolonged the same will happen inside god now will not only be outside and you will be suddenly surprised that he is inside as well he is not only manifesting through the scene but he is in, in the seer as well he is both within and without but do not get attached to that either attachment is the food for the mind to continue its process non attached witnessing is the way to stop the mind without any effort to stop and when you start enjoying those blissful moments your capacity to retain them for a longer period arises eventually one day you become master then when you want to think you think if thought is needed you use it and if thought is not needed then you allow it to rest not that mind is simply not there anymore certainly mind is there the choice is yours to use it or not to use it just like legs or hands mind is there if you want to run you use the legs or walk and if you do not want to run or walk you simply rest your legs there is no need to worry both hands and legs are there just like the mind in the same way mind is always there when i am talking to you i am using the mind because then there is no way no other way to talk except using the mind to form the sentences to form the gaps in between the two words to create the nuances and the gestures that may be necessary for all these mind is necessary when i am answering your questions i am using the mind then to there is no other way i have to respond and relay and mind is a beautiful mechanism for that when i am not talking to you and i am all alone there is no mind remember mind is a medium to relate through sitting alone it is not needed when you have not given it any rest mind becomes mediocre continuous use makes the mind weary and dull in the day you think and in the night you dream in both cases mind works day in day out it goes on working If you live for 70 or 80 years it will be continuously working look at the delicacy and the endurance of the mind it is delicate in a small head all the libraries of the world can be contained and all that has ever been written can be contained in one single mind in such a small space all this is stored computers are there but they are not yet minds mind acts as a computer but computer cannot act as a mind computers are still mechanism they have no organic unity computers do not have any center yet if some day it becomes possible and it is possible as well that scientists may some day be able to create minds then you will know how much space that computer will take and how much noise it will make mind makes no noise it goes on working silently for 70 80 90 years 
and when you are dying your body may be old but your mind remains ever young and fresh its capacity remains yet the same sometimes if you have used it rightly it even enhances with your age remember the more you know the more you understand the more you have experienced and lived the more capable your mind becomes when you die something in your body is ready to die except the mind the body dies but the mind lives on in the east we say mind leaves the body and enters another womb because it is not yet ready to die the rebirth is of the mind and its conditionings and not that of the body once you have attained a state of samadhi or no mind then there will be no rebirth then you will simply die and disappear in the thin air and with death everything will be dissolved your body and mind as well only your witnessing soul will remain that is beyond time and space then you become one with existence and you are no more separate from it the separation comes from the mind but there is no way to stop it by force move lovingly with a deep reverence and it will start happening on its own accord you just watch and there is no need to be in a hurry the modern mind is so much in hurry it wants instant methods for stopping mind you can force the mind to stop by using chemicals drugs but again you are being violent with the mechanism it is not good instead it is destructive this way you are not going to become a master you will be able to stop the mind through the drugs but then drugs will become your master and you will remain slaves always first you were the slave to your mind now you are slave to the drugs you are not going to become the master you have simply changed your bosses and you have indeed changed for the worst now the drugs will exert power over you they will possess you you will be addicted to them without them you will be nowhere meditation is not any effort against the mind it is a way to understand the mind and its functioning it is a loving way of witnessing the mind certainly you have to be patient this mind that you are carrying in your head has arisen over centuries or millennia your small mind carries the entire experience of humanity and not only of the experience of humanity mind has contained the experience of animals birds plants and of rocks as well in fact it contains the experience of all that you have passed through up to now and all that has happened up to now has happened in you as well in a small nutshell you carry the total experience of the existence you represent the entire cosmos in micro form your mind is aggregate of all the experiences in fact to say it is yours is not right instead mind is a collective process and it belongs to us all modern psychology has been approaching it particularly jungian analysis has been approaching it and they have started feeling something like a collective unconscious your mind is not yours instead it belongs to us all our bodies may be separate but our minds are not so separate look at the crowd it acts and thinks only one way human bodies are clearly separate human mind overlaps while our souls are one body is separate minds overlap and souls are one my soul is not different than your soul at the very center of existence we meet and are one this is what god is the meeting point of all mind is a bridge mind bridges the body and the soul between the world and the god 
Instead of destroying it, understand and witness it. Many have tried to destroy it through body postures and breathing that brings that brings subtle chemical changes inside the body. For example, standing on your head in seat shasana, the headstand, you destroy the mind very easily because in headstand too much blood rushes like a flood into the head and you do not know what you are trying to do. The mind mechanism is very delicate and you are flooding it with blood. The delicate tissues will die. That is why you never come across a very intelligent yogi. He is very well versed with his body and postures but not intelligence. Yogis are more or less stupid and dull-witted. Their bodies are healthy. Indeed, it is true. But their minds are just dead. I am not saying there is anything wrong in doing the yoga postures. It is very important. It gives us a certain flexibility to the body. But you have to be careful and understand the mechanism clearly so that you do not Use the postures that can destroy the mind mechanism. You will not see the glimmer of intelligence in their eyes. You will see a very robust body, animal-like, but somehow the humanness has disappeared. Standing on your head, you are forcing your blood into the head through gravitation. The head certainly needs blood but in a very small quantity and that too very slowly, not flood-like. Against the law of gravitation, very little blood reaches to the head in a very silent way. This is natural and is spontaneous and it is beneficial for the development of and functioning of head. If too much blood is reaching into the head, it is destructive. Yoga has been used to kill the mind. Breathing too can be used to destroy the natural spontaneity of the mind. There are rhythms of breath, subtle vibrations of breath, which can be very, very drastic to the delicate mind. The mind can be destroyed through them. These are old tricks. Now the latest tricks are LSD, marijuana and others. More and more sophisticated drugs will be available sooner or later. Therefore, never try to stop the mind, instead watch it. It stops of its own accord. It is beautiful when something happens without any violence. It has a natural growth. You can pull the petals of a bud and force it open. On that you will destroy. You can pull the petals of a bud and open it by force. Thus, you will destroy the beauty of the flower. Now it is almost dead. It cannot stand your violence. The petals will be hanging loose, limp and dying. When the buds open by its own energy, of its own accord, then those petals are alive and there is tremendous beauty and aliveness. The mind is your flowering. Just watch the mind in deep prayer love and rapture and see what happens. Miracles happen of their own accord. There is no need to pull and push. Natural transformation of the mind happens of its own accord. And nothing is wrong. Even if immoral thoughts, so-called immoral thoughts pass through your mind, let them pass. They can cause no harm. There is nothing wrong. The wrong is your identification with such thoughts. When you start identifying in the, with those thoughts, then the process of enactment begins. You remain detached. No harm is being done. Allow it its own way and it will lead you by and by to the state of no mind. Watching ultimately culminates in no mind. No mind is not against mind. Instead, no mind is the state beyond the mind. No mind does not come by destroying the mind. Instead, no mind comes when you have understood the mind so totally that thinking is no longer needed. 
and your understanding has replaced it. Thus remember, witnessing is the only way to break the thinking patterns.